Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I love this audience. It's a great, uh, great welcome here. Um, so thanks, guys, for coming to this afternoon's session. I have the honor of introducing um, Josh Smith, who I'll introduce in a second. But before that, I have some housekeeping announcements. One is that at 3.40, we pretty much have a hard stop in this room. So basically, that means you have to get out of this room. And uh, so 3.40. Uh, don't kind of linger if you can. We have to kind of clean it up so the theater can get on um, creating business through uh, different events that they have later on the day. The second housekeeping announcement that I wanted to make is regarding our vendors. Please go and say hi to them. Um, a lot of them have great job opportunities um, and and or are explaining some of their uh, techniques and um, offerings that they have. And we can't hold um, conferences without their support. So please go say hi to them and uh, see what they're all about. Um, last thing that I wanted to announce is that in your bag, everybody got raffle tickets. So if you haven't had a chance to kind of go through your bag, you should have um, a blue raffle tickets in there. Downstairs at the registration table is where you can um, actually uh, put them in different areas, different boxes to potentially win prizes at the end of the day. Um, also, some of the vendors have raffle tickets, so if you talk to them, you might be able to get a raffle, raffle ticket too. Um, so now I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Josh Smith. He's a Vident Health. So one, he is a homegrown hacker. He started taking apart stuff at the age of eight and has been learning ever since. So he has his OSCP and he is trying to go on and get the advanced certification in that area to have that expert level as well as the CISSP. Um, so warm welcome uh, for Josh. And I also have this amazing book here. It's uh, Going Rogue, um, which I think has a fun little surprise inside for him. So he probably doesn't need to read it. It's more of a take home homework assignment. So if you guys will help me welcome uh, Josh Smith and he is going over uh, starting a dumpster fire. All right, so how many of you actually have professional programming experience? So a few of you. I'm going to go over um, extending a couple of open source tools that are used for data exfiltration. Um, by doing that, we are going to uh, come up with a common interface for, uh, I guess, what you would consider transforms, which could include anything as, uh, such as encryption, compression, any sort of data manipulation, and uh, the network transport side as well. Why would we want to create our own tool rather than use what's already available out there? Well, one key feature is that you know one tool may not do everything we need it to. Um, by using these methods, we can leverage open source software. Um, I'm a big advocate for anything that is open source. Um, how many of you have children? Uh, a, a decent portion. So uh, as you know, uh, children take up a fair amount of your free time. Um, I have two kids myself. So basically, reusing things is uh, my method of creating an um, environment where I can rapidly test and uh, not put as much effort in as I would writing something from scratch. So we're going to be using a design pattern called uh, interface. Um, using an interface, we're going to adapt uh, third-party code to fit within the bounds that we want it to. And with that, we can reproduce, um, reproduce these, sorry, it's my first time giving a talk, <laughs> apologize. With it, uh, you can create a method to get expected results no matter what the input code is. So the transform object that we are going to 
uh, design will include uh, binary input. It does everything like a black box and then binary comes out. This interface is going to implement two functions, uh, encode and decode. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It takes the input binary, encode will encode it, and the opposite is the decode. Then we will um, group them together like uh, layers in an onion in an engine object. Um, so therefore the top layer would take the, the raw data and then pass it to the layers below and encoded data would come out. Uh, decode's obviously the, the exact opposite except for the engine object will process everything in reverse. So this is an example of uh, the test code that I came up with for uh, this concept. Uh, some of the transforms that I chose were compression, encryption. Um, swap actually just reverses the input binary to the exact opposite. Uh, base64, which I'm sure plenty of you know, and uh, Markov chains. So that's half of the equation of um, exfiltrating data is you, you want to implement some sort of a steganography to hide in plain sight. The other half would be actually removing it from the network. So with that, we design a interface for the transport objects, uh, which implements two methods, listen and send, uh, pretty straightforward. Inputs exact same thing. Everything is uh, just expecting a raw binary stream and it uh, processes the exact same way as the transform object except for it operates over the network protocols. All right, so this is a diagram of the entire process. Uh, so starting with a client, it would implement the first transform and go down through the fifth. Uh, then it would actually perform the network translation to a server object, uh, which would then perform the decode operation in reverse. So how many of you have used uh, DET? It's an open source library for data exfiltration. Some of the features of it uh, include Slack, Twitter, um, IPv6, which can be used over Teredo, uh, 6 to 4, several other, you know, different technologies to translate from IPv4 to 6, uh, as well as Gmail, Google Docs, uh, SIP, and Ping. Um, the method that needed to be adapted in that is it actually implements a controller class for the application itself and we will go over how I chose to encapsulate that inside of the uh, code. So the above uh, screenshot is the actual plugin architecture that this open source project used. It implements the config, and it expects a uh, app object to register several callbacks, um, such as the send, receive. So this is my implementation of the wrapper. Um, essentially, this small piece of code takes the entire source of uh, debt and all the network objects it implements and wraps it to the binary interfaces that we discussed earlier. Uh, it's pretty short uh, compared to writing all of those network protocols myself. It, it would have been a lot more work. So um, even the register plugin one doesn't actually do anything. It's just because debt expected it. Um, so essentially, 
this implements the application side that all of the plugins were expecting. From that, uh, this is an example of just one of the protocols, uh, TCP. Um, I implement the send and receive objects uh, that are expecting the um, input. Uh, the second project I chose to use was uh, PyXFill. Um, it uses JetDirect, MDNS, uh, I'll join a couple other different ones. Some of the more interesting um, features it had is it actually has physical uh, means for exfiltrating data such as QR codes, audio. Um, I think there's even a plugin for AM radio transmissions using the built-in sound card. Um, and by wrapping that in the, the same type of interface, I'm able to leverage all of those features for exfiltrating data as well. Uh, this is the example of the DNS uh, implementation within PyXFill. It just implements the class itself uh, for the send and receive. It takes uh, Data X or Pi X still did not need any kind of special adapt adaptions except for some binary changes, so it expected binary instead of a character input. Other than that, um, all of the methods were pretty much ported over with six to eight lines of code. Okay, the top one, I'm gonna say this word once because it short circuits my brain. Markov obfus obfuscate. I, I butcher it every time. I practiced it, I came to it. Um, so it's an interesting project that takes a corpus of text, which could be a book. Um, in the instance that I'm gonna use in a short demo is gonna be uh, Taylor Swift lyrics. Um, and uh, the Original authors, that's the uh, example they used as well. Uh, but this is a form that we can use to encode data in plain sight and bypass DLP filters that are relying on signature analysis, uh, as well as, you know, base64, uh, the Z compression and encryption as well. All of the code um, is available on GitLab on forward slash Joshua hyphen Smith slash B sides uh, RDU 2019. Obviously, the credits go to the open source projects that I decided to use in it. And we will see if I can get my examples pulled up here. One second, please.
So the actual code that it, uh, itself accepts a list of the transforms. Uh, in this example, I just chose to use the same ones that I showed in the slide. Uh, but as you can see, it's fairly straightforward. Um, one of the neat features about the framework that I um, decided to implement is the fact that any of these steps can be rearranged or uh, removed at any point. So say we want to remove the AES. And with the debugging enabled, it shows the uh, entire process. And uh, here are your uh, Taylor Swift lyrics. So just to put yourself in a scenario, if Facebook is allowed uh, on your egress in a corporate environment and someone is posting Taylor Swift-esque lyrics to Facebook, it's not going to trigger any sort of a response. To, to the untrained eye. Um, I believe that methods like this would render any kind of signature-based analysis completely useless, um, and you would have to rely on behavioral or even statistical anomalies to uh, determine if there was any strange activity going on. So instead of the full process, um, this just encodes the data and then sends it across uh, a simple network connection, um, just using the TCP engine for this. I did have uh, a Windows VM set up for some of the PowerShell modules, but uh, I'm unable to get to that, it seems, unfortunately. But uh, this should be an example of um, the process working over the network. Uh, essentially, the only thing that has to be shared in, in these instances would be the AES key and the actual list of manipulations you chose to use, such as uh, encryption, swapping, base64, uh, the Markov chains. So the input data was um, actually some fake information for myself. On the left-hand side, you could see what would actually leave your egress on the network, um, and on the right, uh, what any threat uh, team or, or actor would receive on their end. Sorry I ran a little bit short, and for the mishap at the beginning, like I said, it was my first time I gave a talk. It's hard to judge how much uh, content I needed. Uh, but is there, are there any questions that uh, anyone has? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, on and off since May. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it pulls in all three of these open source projects and allows you to 
utilize them seamlessly. Um, probably total time for me to develop it would be under 20 hours would be my estimate. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, um, so some of the roadmap features that I have mapped out for myself would be uh, implementing a C2, which would then include um, a feature such as that, but uh, uh, one of the ones that I wanted to expand upon would be including um, a pseudo-random uh, list I, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So the order of the list would also be random of, uh, with each transaction. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the Python client was for the Linux implementation of it. Um, there are some PowerShell scripts in that repository. Um, there's more I need to push to it, but my Windows implementation is actually using PowerShell and reflectively loading uh, binary or, or even shell code into memory rather than writing anything to disk. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for enduring. <laughs>